for joining me. Yay. All right, uh, I want to go to Romans 5. Um, so he says here, um, oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, let's start with um, let's start with verse 17, I think, because uh, that's really the verse I, I'm really focused on, I think, and maybe a couple others. We'll see how far we get. Uh, Paul said, "For by if by one man's offense, and if you read it in context, which is important, he's talking about Adam, death reigned by one. It's raining. It's ruling. People die. Can't get past this. You're subject to death. You know, you can't get past this." Um, it's action. Uh, it says, much more they which receive two things, the abundance of grace, we'll talk about that in a second, and the, the gift of righteousness, what's the result? Shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now, abundance of grace. I'll just be brief. I try and be short anyway most of the time. Abundance. Think about that word. Now, when, when, when we talk about God's abundance, because he's the one that's the giver behind this abundance, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? He's infinite. Like, never runs out. His refrigerator, his shelves, his bank account, whatever you want to say, never runs out. And so when infinite comes together with finite, you're finite, I'm finite, we're limited, and unlimited comes together, then we have an abundance of grace. Grace is a special word. It's beautiful. There's lots about that that we could say um, and that the Bible says, not me necessarily, although I have some stuff, but grace is God's favor unto you. So that's just victory to me, just that alone. He favors me. I'm under his favor. That favor isn't um, really something I don't believe that is given just, um, it's just solely to declare me righteous, to call me his son. I mean, imagine him just looking at us and just letting us live in our nature, our flesh nature, and um, just giving us favor in name. We'll just, we're sinners saved by grace. True. But that I don't think we should stay there. Um, Christ calls us righteous. Christ calls us uh, priests and kings in Revelation. Christ, Christ calls us, you know, the sons and daughters of God. We talked about it in First John, and you know, Paul talks about it. it's throughout the Scripture. So on and on, you know, we are um, really, really light and salt and ambassadors, and you know, we're righteous, we're children of God. Blah blah blah. All on and on, on many different labels. But is it just label? You think he would have been satisfied with that? Does that satisfy him? Like he just gives us favor, like, uh, okay, I favor you, but it's not going to really change you. And if it is going to change us, how much grace is being offered? If that grace is abundant, infinite grace, favor towards us to make us righteous. The Bible says we, he who knew no sin was made to be uh, sin that we might be made, not called, not just called, the righteousness of God. God makes us righteous. And I don't believe, again, it's just a name. So he says here, let's go back to it. It says, um, how much more, I love the much more, much more, much more, infinite more, you know, divine arithmetic, as Andrew Murray says, when it says, we ask for, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him, That's, I think in Luke 11. So he says, much more they which receive. Ah, see, there it is. Your part, what's your part? Well, you can't favor yourself. You can't make yourself righteous. We're pretty weak. We're pretty ignorant and we're pretty empty. So it says here, receive the abundant, abundance of grace. So it's a matter of just receiving from God his favor and just acknowledging it. He wants you to receive it. You can't make it yourself. You can't produce righteousness by yourself. Jesus said you can do nothing without me talking about vine and branches. And so receive. You either reject or you receive. How much are you going to receive? Receive it all. <laughs> you know, all his favor towards you. So it says, um, much more they which received abundance of grace. Now listen to this. And of the gift of righteousness. That's uh, the question we could say. What is that gift? Is it just imputed justification, imputed righteousness? 
Um, or is it more than just calling us righteous, declaring us righteous, justified? That is what Paul said throughout the book of Romans. Definitely. We are therefore justified by, by grace through faith. Okay. Um, that's in that, as a matter of fact, in this very chapter that we're talking about, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So we're justified by faith. We're declared righteous, no doubt. But I don't think it's just justification. I think there's a, as you know, probably there's a justification immediately. You're right before God. And then there's a process of sanctification. And then you become righteous. It's just a growth process. But I think you're righteous here. You're made righteous. And then he makes you righteous in conformity to that righteousness. So what is that gift? Is it merely a, a, a gift of words? Or is it a righteousness that's imparted? It's imputed and imparted. It's a, a position and a power. I, I suggest that the gift of righteousness is given to us in inside the spirit of life, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of righteousness, of righteous nature of God. We're per, divine. We're partakers of His divine nature, like it says in Second Peter. Uh, you start putting all these scriptures together. I think the gift of righteousness is something that's tangible. Well, you know what I mean? Like spiritually tangible? How's that? That's a paradox. But it's actual something there, a substance that makes you righteous. And of the gift of righteousness, and it says, shall reign in life. Now, he's definitely contrasting. This whole passage is a lot of contrasts and similarities, you know, between Adam and Jesus, whose Bible calls in sec in 1 Corinthians 15 later on, 10 chapters later, he calls him the second Adam, Jesus. So the first Adam did this, many offenses, and it affected many, and then the, he affects many, Jesus. The disobedience of Adam, the obedience of Jesus, you know, it's contrasting. Here he does, he does a contrast of death and life. Um, now, I think it's it with, it included uh, here that it's eternal life. You know, it, it, it says it in the very last verse, by the way, he goes on and says, unto eternal life through righteousness unto eternal life sounds sound similar to this i think he, he's explaining it more and sometimes it's repetition to clarify so my point is what is that life is it just eternal life well that's all another subject that we have eternal life we said that before he that has the son has life first john 5 so there's life here and it starts here and it's an eternal life it's a quality of life Jesus said, I come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. There's that word abundance. <laughs> it's great. But anyway, here it is. Um, it says that we reign uh, through the gift of righteousness. We reign in life. Think of yourself as a king. You reign in life. Death reign, now life reign. So in a sense, it's definitely the future. I think that's included in that. The question is, is it now? Do we reign now? And if we reign now, reign over what? Reign over sin, the flesh, the devil, the world. I think, I think it could be that in that verse. I think there's a real strong possibility that Paul had that in mind. If not, it's death and life. You know, definitely we reign in life. We're going to have, we're free in eternal life of sin, of sicknesses, of disease, of death, of pain, of suffering. All that is later. And the Bible does talk about that. You know, we reign by one Christ Jesus. But I, I think, I think really, um, oh, I'm thinking about suffering and reigning is what I was thinking about. Sorry, like Second uh, Timothy chapter two and other passages. So here's here, here's what I would like to suggest in ending: Is it possible that that abundance of grace and gift of righteousness we reign in life by one Christ Jesus? Maybe Paul. I wish he was here. I could say, is that what you meant? Or, you know, we could ask the Lord, what, is, what does that mean? I have an inkling that it might be more than, or it could be more than, I don't want to twist the Bible at all, but it could be more than just the idea that, yay, we're in heaven, you know, we're on our our throne, so to speak, uh, we're, we're free from everything, and, you know, we're free from the world and all that. But I think we can, have, through that abundance of grace and a gift of righteousness, that we can not do the bidding of sin cracking its whip, that we rule over that, we rule over the evils in our world. It doesn't affect us. We are kings and queens for the daughters of God listening to this, that we can actually reign in life. How? By one, Christ Jesus. It's all done through him and he's the one that lives 
So that same Jesus who ruled and had dominion on the earth, uh, we can have that same dominion because he's in us and through the abundance of favor towards us and kindness, the abundance of his kindness is his gifts, his righteousness, of wisdom and all that. Everything he, he supplies us, he equips us abundantly with everything that we need. We can live wisely where we don't fall into temptation, we're walking in wisdom. We can live in power. We have the power of the Spirit of God in us. So I think that verse uh, could include um, not just life later, where, where we beat death, but we also beat spiritual death in our lives. And, uh, and we have life now in Jesus Christ, a very life of Jesus is living through us and therefore we reign. We reign. Amen? Thanks for listening.